Hey everybody, today I wanted to show you some different styles of singing. I started uh, cl classically trained at, as a 14 year old um, doing art songs. Now there are more contemporary pedagogies or methods of learning technique and uh, techniques and applying them. Now I'm not a professional opera singer, um, I'm not a professional musical theater. Person. I am a prof professional jazz singer and that is my forte. I'm not demonstrating proper professional technique in any of those other genres, but what I want to demonstrate is that I can approximate the concept, the sound. The larynx looks like this, um, and you can see that all that red stuff right there is muscle. So the way that you develop those muscles has the most to do with what you end up sounding like. I'll never know what made it so exciting. When I was a kid, you know, it was like, oh, that person can belt or that person sounds high and pretty, um, but really you can develop a lot of different ways of sounding over time. because it's like going to the gym for your voice. You have to develop those muscles. They, it's not instantaneous. It's not just think of a trick and you'll get a new sound. Those can help us sometimes, but it really is developing actual muscle and the coordination of those muscles. Just like if you're learning yoga or anything that is a, a muscular process and a coordinate, coordinated process. Every morning the sun comes up brings me coffee and my favorite cup. That's why I know, yes I know, I just love them so. Um, as my teacher, Jeannie Lovetri, describes it, she, you can have the, the trunk of the tree, which is your, your general instrument, and then any of the branches uh, you can go on. sort of a Broadway belting uh, thing for you, but that's actually really my very hardest sound to get. But that would be another branch on the tree, so to speak, that um, you could develop. do all of these styles or all of these different vocal productions in the same day. Um, typically when you're preparing for a certain job or a certain concert, um, you're sticking to, you know, one or two, uh, maybe three of those categories that are kind of close to each other. Like I would sing jazz, some folk, and maybe like some R&B bluesy stuff. Um, I would not sing jazz uh, and classical music in the same concert, you know, unless I was really prepared to do that, which um, is really difficult. Um, so, all that being said, what I wanted to share with you is not perfection, of course, 
in any one of these genres, but the idea that your throat is incredible, your voice can be developed. Uh, it's not either you sing or you don't. It's um, where can you take the instrument that you have. Your instrument is unique and um, special and worth investing in. Um, so the world is your oyster. You can go any of these directions and some of them will feel good and some of them will feel less right. But when you're taking lessons and you're working on a classical piece, just know that that is equally important, if not more, I guess that's a judgment call there, but it's equally important to everything else you're doing. Everything has its own value. So even though you want to sing pop or you want to sing gospel or um, sing on your worship team or sing jazz, um, you should be fully embracing of learning all the styles and all the vocal production techniques that go with all of them because it all serves the whole and makes you a better, stronger singer and provides more opportunities for your uh, possible professional career or your enjoyment. So yeah.